Hi, my name is Jennifer Hatfield, and I'm a museum educator here at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. Welcome. This is part of our Bridging the Gap series, where today we will think about our STEAM series, where we may be talking about science or technology, engineering, art, or mathematics. Let's get started with a look at an image of an outdoor sculpture by Robin Horn, titled Already Set in Motion from her Slipping Stone series. This artist usually works in series, designing pieces that fit within a framework of a common form or theme. Take a few moments to look at the image, maybe even imagine yourself walking around the artwork itself. And when you are ready, we'll talk about the artwork. You can pause it now. Some of the things you may have noticed about the work are the materials, noticing the grain and texture of wood, noticing the color of the wood too, being that black and gray in some areas. Some details that are harder to distinguish is that this sculpture is 10 feet tall and is displayed outside on the grounds of Crystal Bridges. The black dye that Horn has used also disguises the type of wood she has used, which is redwood. However, the artist has not hidden her strong use of angles and lines in the artwork. Take a moment to trace along the sculpture, starting at one point and following a shape or line to the other end. Take note of the different angles that you make and even the direction that you follow. Robin Horn has said, I am drawn to abstract geometric sculpture, the volume of it, the form, the textures, the negative spaces. I am obsessed with tension and movement, the gestural qualities of sculpture. Those qualities in this work are some of those lines and cuts in the wood. Robin Horn's primary tool is a chainsaw. Using the saw to not only cut away at the shape, but also making the markings on the piece, like paint strokes on the canvas. She has said that following about the work with wood, she has said turning or sculpting wood is a subtractive process. Take too much away and a work can be ruined. Leave too much and it can appear unfinished or heavy. And wood is not easy to work with. It resists change and can be difficult to deal with when grain splits and inclusions are encountered. But wood is immediate and perfect for those of us who are impatient. Cut or carve it and it's gone. This Arkansan artist paints as well as sculpts, but has said that when painting, it's easier to paint over something I don't like than to add wood back to a block that I've cut away. One of the ways to describe the material that Horn works with, besides being wood, is that it is also matter. Matter is everything around you. It is anything that has mass and takes up space, having that volume. When Horn transforms a block of wood into her large scale sculptures, she changes what the material, what that matter looks like, its appearance. That means that wood has undergone a physical change in matter. She can cut it, carve it, draw on it. All of these processes are physical changes of matter. However, if she wanted to say, create an opening or a negative space, and maybe she decided to, decided to burn parts of the wood, this would be an example of a chemical change in matter. The burning causes the wood to turn into an entirely new substance. That chemical change in matter has happened at the molecular level. However, if no chemical bonds were broken or created during a change, then it remains a physical change in matter. On a sheet of paper, See if you can list out a couple of examples of matter going through a physical change and then a couple examples of a chemical change in matter. Pause the video to give yourself enough time to complete the activity. Hang on to your activity because you will undoubtedly be able to add more to your list as you study more about physical and chemical changes in matter in class. Just as you jotted down your thoughts and ideas, Robin Horn uses a similar method to help her in her artistry. Early in her career, 
an instructor suggested keeping a notebook of things that inspired or appealed to her. Anything from an interesting form or texture to the design on a necktie in a magazine. She says that it has been extremely helpful over time whenever she needed a creative boost. And that notebook has turned into lots of storage boxes. And we are lucky that she keeps filling those notebooks with inspiration because she continues to translate that inspiration into paintings and large scale sculptures like the one we looked at today. Maybe you will continue to add to the notes you made today and it can be a source of inspiration or serve as a creative boost to you. I hope so. Thank you for looking today.